Florida. Now moving into the front. How you doing guys? There is one problem with living on the coast and that's the inevitable hurricane season. For some reason every time a hurricane is heading towards the area everybody thinks you're automatically a meteorologist. They think you know something that they don't. You always get that person that asks, is it going to get bad? Well, I don't know any more than they do. It might and they'll always respond, I don't think it's going to get that bad. Why ask? Right now, I keep it short and sweet because I really don't want to go into it. When somebody asks if they think it's going to get that bad, I'll be like, death and destruction, then walk away. Anyways, some years ago, when I was younger, I used to love to work out. Matter of fact, the whole gang group of guys I hung out with, we all used to work out. We take our youth for granted. Because as the years went by, I had stopped, and I moved to where I'm living now, and I was getting older, and I still hadn't taken that into consideration, but I was looking at other people that were in my age group, and I was not liking what I was seeing. A lot of these guys look like human kumquats, so I figured, you know, i got to start working out again. I had built a gym on my porch because I found that the gyms, especially the gyms in the 80s, does anybody remember they were more like discotheques? And to me, that was just too many distractions. When you get a girl working next to you in a thong, it's like, how can you work out like that? You can't. So I figured, okay, I'll just build a gym at the house, which I did. I always had this thought as I was getting older to push myself all the harder to make up for the age difference. I was always afraid that I was not going to be able to get the same results as when I was younger. So as I was getting older, I started educating myself on supplements and I started getting more into nutrition than when I was younger and I was working pretty well. Like I said, I was pushing myself all the harder and it was working quite well for some years. I was out in service one time and I was out with one of the elders and we took my car. I had gone to the nutrition shop to get myself some supplements and I had one of the bottles in the car. I can't recall if it was a vena sativa or tribulus terrestris. Now, both are designed naturally to increase the testosterone level. Because <clears throat> the one thing I found out as I was getting older, naturally, testosterone levels are going to drop. And if your testosterone levels drop, you're not going to have any gains. So I learned how to kind of cheat and put the testosterone levels back up. Well, as we're out and driving around, he looks down. He sees the bottle. He picks it up. And he says, what's this? Now, apparently all he saw on the bottle was testosterone. So I told him, that is tribulus terrestris. And he says, well, what's it for? It increases your testosterone level. He looks at me and says, you know, as a Christian, you have no business increasing your testosterone. Well, I looked at him and says, listen, you know I work out. I'm getting older. Low testosterone, no results. That ended the conversation right there. As the years were going by, I was pushing myself harder and harder and harder. And the unfortunate thing, I came to a point where I was pushing so hard that it was having a reverse effect. I couldn't deny that I was getting older and pushing hard was not going to work anymore. So I had to back off a little bit. Could not work out as often as I did. At the time, I was working out six days a week, anywhere from two and a half to three hours a day. Come rain or shine, no matter what, I will be out there working out. So I had to cut back from six days a week to five days a week and didn't work out so much so hard, and that kind of helped. I was still getting good results. I thought of this when I saw a comment in my uh, last upload from uh, Calvin McCoy. He mentioned something that I had completely forgotten about, where Watchtower, when they made the comparison of a runner to Jehovah's Witnesses. And I had completely forgotten about that, and I remember that analogy. 
And while he was commenting, I was thinking about that too as well. You remember how you're at the meetings and you hear you're running the race to the finish line. Well, that's a dangerous analogy for the reason being. Even a runner knows where the finish line is. <clears throat> now, they don't start off giving it their all. When they start racing, they basically will pace themselves to conserve energy for that last run. Now, if they give it their all too soon, they're going to run out of gas and they're going to lose. The other runners will pass them. But they know how far the finish line is. They know how long to pace themselves and they know when to gun it. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses have always made that comparison that they are running the race to the finish line. The only difference is the runner knows where that finish line is. He knows how much longer it's going to take to get there. He knows when to conserve energy. He knows when to gun it. Jehovah's Witnesses, although they think the end is close, they still don't know where the end is. But what does Watchtower have them do? Watchtower has them giving them giving it full throttle to make it to that finish line. Like I said, they don't know where that finish line is. Now in 19, the, late, the early 1970s, late 1960s, they thought they knew when the finish line was. So what did they do? They sold everything they had to go into the Pioneer Service. And they were all giving it their all to make it to 1975. And they could see that finish line. It was 1975, and they'd given it their all, given it their all, and what happened? Somebody moved the finish line down further because the end didn't come in 1975. Well, Watchtower learned from their past mistakes that they could not give an end date because they had to do a lot of damage control. Today, Jehovah's Witness say, oh, that was our fault. No, it was Watchtower's fault because they did flat out tell you. The problem with Jehovah's Witnesses giving it their all to get to this finish line, goes back to my last video. They are letting life pass them by. And the sorry thing is, when they give it their all, when they are gunning it to make it to that finish line, and what it is is dangling a carrot that they're never going to be able to reach, this is where the depression comes in. They get discouraged. Now you have your other JWs think they're being encouraging by keeping you going, but they're in the same boat you're in. They know no more or no less than you do. Me and one other JW went to visit a woman who was dying. She was in an, in an assisted living facility at this point in time. And we got into the room. Now, this is about 10 years ago. And I think she only had a few days left, but she was looking pretty discouraged. She was looking really, really down. She asked us, how much longer? Well, the JW says, not much longer. But the thing is, she's asking him like he knew, and he didn't know any more than she did. But her race was over in a few days. Oz is still going on. And this is the thing with Jehovah's Witnesses. They're still running to that finish line. Now with this 2020, they think the finish line is right there. And they don't realize, just if you go biblically, how much BS you've still got to go through before you hit that finish line. It's not going to be anytime soon, yet Jehovah's Witnesses think it's just around the corner. It's always just around the corner. As a matter of fact, it's been just around the corner for over 100 years, and they still don't wake up. They don't research their own history. And one thing they're not realizing, why do you think Watchtower is doing away with all the older publications? It's not because they're outdated, like I was told. No, it's because it exposes them as false prophets. They want you to keep going. They want you to keep donating. So what do they do? They continually dumb you down. They keep you in this endless race while you're still donating. And in the meantime, you're all getting burnt out. You're all getting discouraged. You're all getting depressed. And you can't tell me Jehovah's Witnesses are not, are not an unhappy bunch because, yes, they are a very unhappy bunch. My first few years, I was fine. They didn't get under my skin too much because I was still living my life on the outside. No, I still worked. There was no way I was going to pioneer. As a matter of fact, I auxiliary pioneered on a couple of occasions. And I'm like, you know, there's no way I could do this full time and live my life on the outside. But no, they want you to put so-called kingdom interests first, put everything aside, 
and focus on this race that will never end. And this is why Jehovah's Witnesses have so many issues, so many depression issues. Their suicide rate inside the org is far higher than any group or any population on the outside. They'll just flat out deny it, but that is a fact. I've seen people, as a matter of fact, I knew one person, as a matter of fact, it was kept from me, who had committed suicide. I had to find out from somebody outside the organization what really happened, because nobody in my congregation would talk about it. But they're a very, very depressed group. But Calvin McCoy, thank you for that comment, because it just snapped into my head, because I had completely forgot about that analogy. Anyways, guys, that's all I've got for you today. I'll talk to you in a few days.